So the first thing that we're going to have to address is what exactly is a drying agent? A drying agent is basically any substance that's hygroscopic, which means that it really likes to pull and hold onto water. These substances have a wide variety of use in food, pharmaceuticals, and electronic industries where they're packaged with things to keep them dry. These drying agents can be found in those little bags that say do not eat in a lot of things that you buy. Because there's a lot of things that like to pull in and retain water, there's a huge variety of different drying agents. In terms of chemistry, drying agents really have one major use and that's to dry solvents. Because there's so much water present in our atmosphere, most solvents end up dissolving a little bit of water. It's also very common to dry a solvent before you evaporate it off so it doesn't leave a little water residue in your product. Anyway, so now that we know what a drying agent is, we can get started on the preparation. These are just a few examples of different drying agents that there are. On the left you'll see calcium chloride, in the middle there are molecular sieves, and on the right it's magnesium sulfate. In this video we're focusing on drying magnesium sulfate, but drying the others is pretty similar. So to start out, all of the magnesium sulfate is poured onto an appropriate pan. Then, just using my hand, I break up some of the huge large clumps and I try to spread it out as even as possible. In this case, it's okay to touch the magnesium sulfate because it's not dangerous, but be aware that not all drying agents are going to be safe to touch with your hands. So when it's all evened out, we can place it in the oven and start the drying process. I like to start it off just above 100 degrees Celsius. So after leaving it about for an hour at 110 degrees Celsius, you can see that the top layer is pretty dry but the bottom is still kind of wet. The temperature that you started at is really going to depend on what you're drying. When you buy magnesium sulfate from the store as Epsom salts, they already come a little bit wet. The biggest thing to pay attention for with these salts is you don't want to heat it up too quickly because it will release too much water and it will dissolve itself in it. If this happens, then you'll end up with a solid clump that sticks to the pan and it's a pain to deal with. So what I do now is I use a spoon and I remove all of the wet magnesium sulfate that's clumped on the bottom. I loosen it up and break up the large pieces so that the wet stuff is exposed. As I said before, if this isn't done, your final product is going to stick like glue to your pan and it's going to be a pain to remove. So once everything's done being loosened up in the pan, it can be put back in the oven. For magnesium sulfate, this part's very important. First, it's turned up to 120 degrees Celsius. Then, it's left at this temperature until it appears that the magnesium sulfate is dry. It's then raised to just about 150 degrees Celsius, which is when the next water is released, and it's held there until it appears dry. Then it's raised to 180 degrees Celsius for a little while. And then after that, it's raised to 200. And finally, when that seems dry, it can be raised to something like 250. Be careful not to heat it up too much. I found that my oven was a little erratic and when I raise it to 250, sometimes it burned the magnesium sulfate. It's very important to heat it slowly between 150 and 200 degrees Celsius because again, if too much water is released, it will dissolve itself in it. You might actually have to flip the magnesium sulfate several times over the whole process and when you do this is kind of a judgment call. If you did it right, you'll be left with nice fluffy and crunchy magnesium sulfate. Once it's out of the oven, you can see with a spatula, it's very easy to manipulate it. It cools down pretty quickly, and even after a minute or so, I can pick it up with my hands. Anyway, once it's cool enough, it should be transferred to a Ziploc bag. I transferred everything into just one bag, but ideally you should split it up between multiple ones. The idea here is that in the bag, you'll simply crush the magnesium sulfate with your hands to powderize it. If it's all in one big bag, that's going to be pretty hard to do. Anyway, eventually it's all transferred and we have a nice big bag of magnesium sulfate. It can then be crushed up by hand or using whatever method you prefer and then transferred to an appropriate sealed container. It's important to seal the magnesium sulfate well because it's quite hygroscopic which means that it likes to pull water from the air. 
Here's a list of the next few videos that you can expect to see. These are all done filming and I just need to edit them. I plan to finish editing them and upload them over the next few weeks.